Hi, this is Guy, the Coin Bureau Crypto Honcho. Before I get going on this review of Phantom, I should make it clear that we are not paid or mandated to do any of these videos. I'm not your financial advisor and this sure ain't financial advice. We do our research and present our views for your educational purposes only. Also, if you're new to this channel, then you may want to hit that subscribe button for the latest news, reviews, analysis, and some juicy tips. Now, with that out of the way, let's get right back to Phantom. Phantom is a distributed ledger stack that is building a platform for the purpose of powering smart cities and all the services that constitute them. Think public utilities, healthcare, education, traffic, etc. They have some high targets as well. For example, they want the platform to execute over 300,000 transactions per second. They also want this platform to be able to communicate across multiple service providers, essentially be the IT infrastructure backbone for these future smart cities. So pretty grand ambitions, but how will they achieve them? Let's start by taking a closer look at their technology. You'll have noticed that I have not mentioned blockchain yet, and that is for a very good reason. Phantom is not a blockchain based platform at all. They use an entirely different data structure called a DAG that's directed acyclic graph. This is the same data storage system that is used by the likes of Nano and IOTA. It's considered much more scalable than a blockchain. If you're new to DAGs, then you can read our full piece on the technology in the description below. But moving on, the Phantom technology stack is made up of a number of different layers. Firstly, you have the Opera core layer. This is the bottom layer and it has the responsibility for maintaining consensus across the nodes. It uses a DAG to confirm transactions and nodes are able to process them asynchronously thanks to the nature of DAG technology. It also uses witness nodes to validate the transactions. These nodes are reliant on delegated proof of stake consensus. Then on top of the core layer, you have the where layer. This is designed to execute functions on the platform, such as issuing rewards and payments, as well as writing what are called story data. And finally, sitting at the top of the stack, you have the application layer. This holds the publicly available APIs that the developers will use to allow their dApps to interface with the Opera Ware layer. If you want any more information on the technology, including info on story data and other features, then you can read our long form Phantom review below. Now. Another key component behind the Phantom Protocol has to be their FTM utility tokens. These tokens are the fuel that powers the Phantom ecosystem. The project held an ICO in June of 2018 where they sold the ERC20 version of their tokens. They sold 40% of the tokens in exchange for about $39 million, so about four cents a token. These tokens hit the exchanges in October of 2018 and were subsequently caught up in the bear market. However, Phantom has also issued tokens on the Binance chain as BEP2 tokens. This was done in order to increase interoperability by creating a multi-asset cross-chain ecosystem. Now moving on, the team behind Phantom has gone through a number of changes since their inception. The technical team is comprised of 11 developers and they have diverse backgrounds including finance, cryptography, business development, software engineering, architecture and other related disciplines. This team has been pretty busy recently, beavering away while pushing regular code commits to their GitHub. Something else that is pretty encouraging is the active community that is supporting the project. For example, they have a reasonably sized Telegram channel with healthy conversations. They also have a decent following on their regular social media accounts. And in terms of trading, FTM tokens are available on a number of different exchanges, including Binance, KuCoin, Bittrex, Bitmax, etc. They're even listed on the Binance Dex for those of you who are feeling slightly adventurous, although turnover is a bit low here. Now, having said all that, there are strong and healthy turnovers on all of the major exchanges. This bodes well for the liquidity of FTM. Once you have your FTM tokens, you'll want to store them in an offline wallet. Given that these are ERC20 standard tokens, there are a plethora of wallets that you can choose. However, I would opt for a secure hardware wallet like a Ledger or Trezor. In conclusion then, Phantom is a pretty ambitious project even by cryptocurrency standards. Being the IT backbone of a smart city will be no easy feat. 
However, they have garnered a great deal of interest in the cryptocurrency community and they are actively developing their technology. We'll have to wait and see whether they can live up to the hype. Now, what do you think of Phantom? Do you have any questions for me? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this overview helpful, show your love by hitting that like button and subscribing. Much more crypto coverage will be coming your way very soon.